like John said, my name is Tom Young, lifelong resident of Upper Sandusky, Ohio, and I just love the history of this area. Uh, anybody who lives in this area, uh, you got to know that this is a real historic uh, place for uh, the Wyandotte tribe. Uh, General Harrison in the War of 1813 was here. So there's a lot of things here, that a lot of sites that just some people aren't aware of. Uh, I'm going to go over this morning about uh, the background in uh, Battle Island of Colonel Crawford, Colonel William Crawford. Uh, but first I've got to go through a little bit about the uh, history of the uh, Wyandots that came here in this area. Uh, the Wyandotte tribe uh, were actually Hurons, and they were part of the Iroquois Confederation at one time, but uh, they were driven out of the Great Lakes area, New York, and that area early in the 1600s, and uh, ended up around the lake, around the Detroit area, and uh, up in Lake Erie, which it wasn't that at that time. And uh, uh, contention of the uh, Hurons broke off and came down here and uh, formed the uh, Wyandotte tribe uh, and lived in this area. So they've been out around here a long time. Uh, with Colonel Crawford, uh, Colonel William Crawford was uh, actually in the revolution as a uh, uh, actual military officer. He was friends with George Washington through doing surveys. Uh, Crawford did a lot of surveying for Washington in the Ohio area, him and his, uh, his brother uh, got General Washington a lot of property, hundreds of thousands of acres. And that's how they got to know each other. And uh, when the, uh, the Americans decided that they needed to come to this area and uh, lay waste to the land because the Wyandots uh, in this area have Several tribes live in close. The Mangos, the Shawnees down in Wapatonica, uh, the Miamis over in, uh, towards Indiana, uh, and the Delawares. The Wyandots and Delawares live in this, this area specifically. And the Wyandots being what they call the grandfather tribe. Now they used to come here, uh, as you think of Upper Sandusky, this Upper Sandusky wasn't the Upper Sandusky then. That was out of town ways, and it was called Upper Sandusky. It was a white out village. And I, I guess the, this area was just a hotbed of activity. The tribes would meet here, and then they'd go on the raids. And I, I think, in my own opinion, the, they did that because they were far enough away from Fort Pitt, far enough away from the Virginia border, which was West Virginia, or is West Virginia today, that they could meet in a relative peace and get their plans together. And uh, if you think about you know, the, the ongoing Indian and American conflicts, uh, several expeditions before Crawford even came here. You know, you have uh, General Harmer, and General St. Clair, both ended up defeated. Uh, then Colonel Crawford came to this area. And what they wanted to do, they wanted to come to this area and make it so the Indians couldn't go raid. If they came to this area and destroyed the houses, the villages, the corn, everything that was planted, then the uh, Indians would have to stay home and because they wouldn't have the food. And there was an old Wyandotte saying that uh, whenever the Wyandotte women didn't want their men to go to war, they just didn't feed them. <laughs> uh, so, you know, that was just the, the kind of the, uh, society of the Wyandots. Colonel Crawford uh, was, he was a good soldier. And there's, I got to tell you that there's a lot of uh, uh, bickering back and forth of what really happened. And just like me today, I'm only quoting what I've read. Now, if I was back in 1782 and wrote something down, and I wrote it from my memory, and it was different from everyone here in the room, and mine got published, and yours didn't, that's what people would read. So you read different accounts, and. That's why I like to read all kinds of accounts, especially letters that were written. And there's a book out that I read that uh, it's actually both sides. Now, when the Crawford campaign happened, a lot of the uh, sentiment was against the Indians. 
there was a Breckenridge that wrote a, an account in September of 1782, real negative, real negative. Uh, Butterfield wrote his account, real negative, against the Indians. I read all those accounts, and I've also read a book uh, by Alan Fitzpatrick called uh, War Along the Ohio. And uh, Fitzpatrick had a relative that was a Tory. So he went to Canada and started doing research. And he found out that General Haldeman, who was in charge of the area for the British at that time, had at least two or three majors under him that all they did was transcribe all the letters that were sent to him from this area all over Ohio. And what they would do is the officers that were stationed around here uh, would write a diary like, and they would send it up to, to Canada to Haldeman. He would have it transcribed and sent over to England. Well, all this stuff was in an archives in England, and somehow they found it, brought it back to Canada, and somehow Alan Fitzpatrick found all these letters. And so if you read that book, there is a godsend of information about Upper Sandusky and the battles along Ohio, all through the area, some Pennsylvania, uh, just all kinds of information. And like I said before, it depends on the person that wrote it. Now, if you have somebody that was against uh, Americans, they might write negative things about the Americans. That's why I like to read both accounts, because you're getting from both sides and you've got to take the middle. So it's a very good book to read. Well, Colonel Crawford, they, uh, they tried to get an army together. They were going to send a regular army, but uh, they couldn't get one together. The Congress wouldn't accept the cost, so they uh, decided to <clears throat> put together a militia. General Irvin at Fort Pitt was in charge, and uh, he asked if uh, the, the commanders who they'd like to have, and of course, Colonel Crawford's name came out. Now, Colonel Crawford at that time was out of it. He, he was enjoying what he thought was his retirement. There's a couple different accounts of when Crawford came here. One account you read, he was 50 years old. Another account you read from uh, Grace Emheiser, who was a relative of Crawford's and wrote a book about the Crawford family, said they found documents in the family that said he was near 60 years old when he came here. I know he wasn't a spring chicken, because even at 15 years old back in those days, you didn't get around much, because it was a hard life. So they asked Crawford if he would consider bringing troops here and, and doing a, a battle against the Indians. Now Crawford was involved with the uh, Braddock's defeat. He was a soldier in that. Also, George Washington was. And Crawford, you know, he, he was a patriot. So he said, yeah, I'll come to this area. Because a lot of the stuff, like I said, that happened was right here in Upper Sandusky. They all came here, and they would take off on the raids with a uh, British officer with them. Or Simon Gurney was here. He would take uh, a contingent of Indians down along the border and do raids. Um, there was a uh, uh, Lieutenant Byrd, and uh, he was a British officer, but the British were, some of them liked the Indians, some of them thought they were savages. Uh, uh, Byrd was the savage, he, he didn't like the Indians. They didn't like him either because he uh, had a raid that they, they went down along the uh, Ohio to do, and uh, it's in the, in the uh, Fitzpatrick book, he said that when they wrote back the information that if the Indians would have had it, had it their way, they would have probably killed him and set him along the trail because they just didn't like him. And he didn't like the Indians. He never confided in them. He, you know, they thought he was a coward. Simon Gurney kind of kept him neutral. He kept him from getting <coughs> killed. So, so you had that going back and forth. And the only interest the British had was that they wanted to keep a presence here in the Ohio country. Now the you know the revolution, the treaties for the revolution, they were supposed to abandon all, all the lands around, but they kept forts up around the lake and they kept stirring up the Indians by saying that, you know, if you went to battle against the Americans, we'll help you out. And the Wyandots here, when it first started out, the Wyandots, uh, during uh, the French and Indian War back back then. They were more or less uh, allies of the French until the British kicked the French out. Then the Wyandots became allies of the British. Uh, 
they had a real dislike for what they called the Virginians or the Long Knives because of the swords they carried. And that was the most hated enemy, was the Virginians. And of course, Crawford was you know, a head of a Virginia militia that he brought here. Now, when Crawford formed his troops, uh, he formed them at uh, Mingo Bottom, which today they said is uh, Mingo Junction, Ohio. I've read it that it was part of Virginia. I've read Ohio. But you've got to consider that at this time, everything up around here was Virginia. It was Virginia lands. It was claimed by Virginia. So Virginia had a big stake in this area. And with Crawford, you know, they, they wanted to get somebody here that was competent to bring troops. Uh, Crawford had his doubts because before he even came here, he made his will out because he just had a bad feeling about it. And so after he made his will out and they formed the troops, they had a vote of which commander they wanted to lead the troops. I, I read that it was by two votes that he beat David Williamson out. Now everybody knows who David, David Williamson is, I would assume.